Hello, and welcome to Cox Reel's Tech Tips. Today we're standing out on one of Cox Reel's assembly lines, and we're going to be talking about putting your own hose onto one of Cox Reel's reels. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about safety. Whenever you're working with any sheet metal product, you want to make sure you have gloves. The second thing to consider in this scenario is we've got to have the reel bolted down or mounted in place where you're going to be using it. We're going to be winding the reel up and loading the spring. You want to make sure that it doesn't come off on you and go flying. Before we get started about the reel, let's talk a little bit about the hose itself. Every reel is designed to work with a specific range of hose, and you can tell what that range is by looking in the catalog or online and seeing what normally comes on your model when you buy it with hose. If your hose is stiffer or higher in pressure or bigger in diameter or much smaller in diameter, you're going to have problems with rewind, maybe not enough spring, and issues like that. If you're worried, consult the factory whether or not your hose will work on that specific model. While we're talking about hose, when you're selecting it, the Cox Reels comes with hose clamps on each, uh, one inside and one outside. You want to make sure that the hose clamps fit on the hose and when they're tightened that the hose can't be pulled through them. This is very important for proper longevity and function of your reel. If the strap is too large for your hose and the hose slips through, you need to look at getting yourself a smaller hose strap before you continue. Now another couple of things that you're going to need before we continue is a ball stop that fits your hose and a hose guard. Now some models will come with trim installed on the opening and in those cases you don't have to worry about a hose guard. But if it does not, such as this model, you need a hose guard which we also sell along with the ball stops as accessories. Some of the tools you're going to need to get this project done are a short stubby screwdriver, Phillips. You're going to need a 3 8 wrench or nut driver. You're going to need a wrench that will fit your swivel, and you're going to need a wrench that's going to fit your hose. And lastly, you're going to need some kind of sealant, either pipe dope or Teflon tape like I have here. Now the first step that we're going to do is remove our hose clamps that we discussed earlier, which you've probably already done since you've checked whether your hose fits in them. I'm going to pause right here and tell you guys about the two methods there are to load hose onto the reel. The first method is called a pre-tension method where we use the spring of the reel to actually pull the hose onto the drum. And the second method is called a post-tension method where we manually load the drum with hose and then we add tension to it afterward. The reason that you use the post method is because you have a constant tension reel. That's a reel that doesn't latch like a gas station reel or you have an application that is, uh, it is impractical to load, preload the spring, or it is unsafe to wind up all the tension onto the spring. I'm going to go ahead and continue shooting the rest of the video with the pre-tension method because it's fairly simple and it's foolproof. And then afterward, we're going to shoot a short to show you the differences between the two. Now that you have your hose straps removed from the reel, we're going to go ahead and wind up tension onto the spring. We're going to do this by turning the reel so that the hose would be coming out of the rollers. In this particular configuration, it's like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to wind the spring by hand until we find the bottom of the spring, which is something you'll feel. And then we're going to back off the spring a turn and latch it in place. Let me demonstrate. So I found the bottom of the spring and I'm going to back off a turn and I'm also going to try and put this hole on top where I have to do a little bit of work with the hose clamps and we'll latch it in place. The next step is going to be to put the hose in but before I do I want to talk a little bit about lockout. Lockout is a uncommon scenario that can occur occasionally and what happens is as you're winding the reel up you end up in a latched position and you run out of spring at the same time. In this case, you can't go forward and you can't go backwards because you're latched. What you need to do is release the dog mechanism. On a P-series reel like this, you can simply reach in, release it, and let the reel go. On some other models, it's a little harder and you need to take a screwdriver in from the backside, get between these two, and essentially do the same thing, push this out of the way. 
and let the reel rewind. Okay, we're gonna load our hose onto the reel. We're gonna start by going through the roller bracket and around and out the hole. The next step is gonna to be to attach our hose to our swivel, but before we do, if you need a spring hose guard, make sure that you put that on first, otherwise you're gonna be chasing it on all 50 or 100 feet that you may have. The next step is gonna to be to go ahead and pull the swivel off. You don't have to pull the swivel off. You could fight the hose and thread it in there, but taking advantage of one of Cox Reel's great features, which is an easily removable swivel, we'll go ahead and remove the swivel and then do our connection separately from the reel. We're gonna go ahead and assemble our hose to our swivel. We're gonna use standard NPT assembly procedures with a little bit of sealant, not too much. Be sure you use the right port. And be sure not to over tighten your swivel. NPT threads don't generally need as much torque as people think they do. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put our swivel back onto our reel the same way we took it off. And then we're gonna snug it tight. There's no need to over torque this. The next step is gonna to be to put our hose clamps here and here. One of these hose clamps goes on the outside, the other one goes on the inside. As you're putting this together, be sure to put the smooth side of the screw on the inside of the drum. You don't want it cutting your hose. Let me demonstrate. So the outside hose clamp, smooth side through the hole. And now is the time to move our hose protector into place between the two clamps. And then we'll put on our inside clamp, which should be pointing down so that the hose is up against the drum. Again, the round head of the screw on the inside of the drum. Before we tighten our hose clamps in place, I need to talk about service loop. It's very important on this design of reel that you have a loop before it goes into the disc. This loop should be such that the angle between the opening and the hose leaving the swivel is 90 degrees. This is the loop that we're talking about. So at this point, adjust your hose until you have a 90 degrees between your opening and the outlet of your swivel, and then go ahead and tighten your hose clamps. This is what short stubby screwdriver is for, so that you can hold the backside while you're tightening. Now that we have the hose secured, we have our hose protector in place, and we have our 90 degree service loop in place, we can go ahead and load the rest of the hose onto the reel. Now as you know, the reason you bought a reel is because hose tangles up. And so if I tried to wind it off of this loop, we'd have a big rat's nest over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the hose far away from me. And then I'm going to unlatch the reel by pulling on the hose and then let the reel spring wind up my hose for me. And I'm gonna carefully feed the hose in and unwind any knots as they come along. Why we get a hose reel. I'm gonna stop before the end and relatch my reel. And what we're gonna do now is install our ball stop at the distance that you want. Normally it's about a foot away from the end. However, if your reel is higher, you may want more hanging down. And the ball stops are very simply put together by two opposing screws. We unscrew, open, put around our hose, and clamp them back together. 
Like so. Now there's no need to tighten past the point where the rubber touches. You can actually over tighten and pull the screws through the rubber if you try too hard. Now that our ball stop is in place, our holes installation is complete. Now we're gonna talk about loading the hose using the post tension method. What I've done is go ahead and prep the same reel. I've removed all of the hose from it, but I left all the other work that we did. So we've installed our hose, we've used our two hose clamps, we have our hose protector, we have our 90 degree service loop, and it's installed into our swivel. The only difference here is that I didn't pre-tension the reel. Our reel right now is in a neutral position and it's not latched. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load the hose manually and we got a couple of different choices on how to do this. If you have a soft hose, like 3 8 or half inch, you can just go ahead and flexibly wrap the hose around the drum until you've loaded the whole hose. However, if you're working with a stiff hose or a larger diameter hose, that can be kind of cumbersome and difficult to do. So I'll show you another method. Now this method can be done like it is right now with just hanging off or it can be through the roller bracket if you followed the first instructions exactly. This method is, is winding the reel backwards. Now we can do this because Cox Reels features a declutching arbor. The arbor is what's called the center part of the spring and the declutching part means that you can run the reel backwards without breaking anything. So and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to spin it backwards and load the hose by spinning the drum. So let me demonstrate. Now it makes a little bit of noise, and that's the arbor declutching every time it goes around, but don't worry, you're not breaking anything. Okay, now that I have all of the hose on the drum, what we're gonna need to do is put some tension onto it. And the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna tuck some of this under one of the loops so that it stays in place. And then I'm going to wind three pre-wraps. That's kind of a default starting point. And we're gonna do that the same way we did the tensioning in the pre-tension method, which is turn the drum in the direction as if you were pulling the hose out, in this case, up. So, three turns. One, two, and three. And then I'll latch my reel. I'll pull out our tech hose, put it up through the roller bracket, and then I will install our ball stop. This time I have a power tool. Again, no need to over tighten past the point where the rubber touches and our hose installation is complete. Now, the reason that I don't prefer this method is now there's an extra step. You have to check to make sure that you have not bottomed out the spring with this installation. And we'll do this like this. We wind all of the hose off. And we look to see what is stopping us at the end. In this case, What's stopping us at the end is the hose strap, and that's what you want. If for some reason it stops, and there's still hose left on the drum, that means the spring is stopping you. If you leave it like that, you'll get premature failure of your spring. So, if you did by some chance have the spring stopping you, you have to remove a wrap. I'm not gonna go through how to do that here. We have an extra video for adding and removing tension. It's on our YouTube channel, check that one out. Now, some of you may have a real model that is called the T-Series that doesn't quite look like this. I'm going to go ahead and do a short after this to show specifically the differences between the P and the T-Series for you guys. Welcome to the short on the T-Series. 
Uh, we're doing this because the T-Series looks a little bit different than the P-Series that we used to make the hose installation video. And the process is exactly the same. I just wanted to show you what to do with this bracket and this arm and how to get the swivel off uh, so that you can follow the exact steps that we just outlined. So the first step is going to be to remove this bracket, these three bolts, and the last step is going to be to remove the snap ring. Now with all of the bolts loose, I'll go ahead and I'll pull off the snap ring. With the arm removed, we can now follow the exact steps that were outlined in the beginning part of the video for the P and the SH series. Now, some of you may be in a situation where you don't want to remove the arm or you can't remove the arm or the reel's in a bad place. You can load the hose without removing this arm. You want to begin by loading the reel tension up onto the spring, then installing your hose into your swivel, and then feeding all 50 or 100 feet through the hole and out the roller bracket, tighten your clamps, and then let the reel wind up the hose. It's a little bit more work, but it can be done that way. And that concludes our tech tip for loading the hose onto our spring rewind reels. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel and our upcoming tech tips, and have a nice day.